Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds, hang out with this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. Today we have a GM tip for you, filling in the blanks and adding details to your campaign. Jump down in the description to sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with us. So, you were recently um, hanging out in one of the Facebook groups over on, uh, for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. And someone was asking about, you know, you know, the, what was it? The right amount of detail? How much detail? There, there was a, there was a DM. Who Your car's was, dirty. You got to get it detailed. <laughs> there was a, there was a DM who was, I, I, based on my conversation, I believe fairly new to the trade, and he was asking about that his players were asking for more detail. You know, in in his descriptions, in the things that he's he's doing, and they were craving more. And he was asking for advice. And there was a lot of good stuff that was said. There was a lot of not good stuff. Like, oh, you know, kill their characters. Or, you know, drone on for ten minutes every every time somebody, you know, says something. Describe in intimate detail the one rock that's there. You know, it's like, you you can figure out what's the, what's the correct amount of detail based on the players. Alright, so we've got a bunch of videos where I think we cover some of this okay. in it. So so but now we're gonna we're gonna look at it maybe from a little bit different perspective of filling in the blanks and adding details to you know, to your game, to your to the campaign. And here's the thing, right? You're you as the GM, you as the DM, you have you have one role that you know kind of like outstrips and outshines all the other roles. And that is to convey the world to your players. Like without that, nothing can really happen. You're you are all their senses, you know. All the inform you, you all the sensory information comes in through you. Even like knowledge and lore and stuff like that is probably coming from you, unless you're playing a pre a pre written campaign setting. So that's a lot of weight that's on your shoulders that you are you're taking on when you decide to get behind that screen when you when you decide you're going to run that story, but you know. Every player that comes to your table, they're going to want a different experience. Every single player, you know, has a different level of detail that, that they're seeking from the game. Some people are very imaginative, and you say, there's an orc in front of you, roll initiative. They, they can picture what they see as an orc. And it could be menacing, it's got its weapon, it's frothing at the mouth, it's enraged, where somebody else might just see, okay, there's a green skin humanoid, what's he doing? You know, is it, am I rolling initiative because I'm acting first? Is he looking combative? They don't know, they don't know how to extrapolate, and it's up to you to convey all of that. Right, so there, there's different ways of doing this to adding these details into your game and and like i said we've covered plenty of this before but so one of the things that you said is that you talked about the weight of being the dm and and how much this can weigh you know can weigh on the on the on, on that particular player but it's a shared game we so we can all kind of help out and pitch in you know maybe it's your job as the dm to, to, to describe that orc right that's in front of them and convey you know the fact that he seems hostile you know he's He's gripping his weapon tight. His knuckles, his knuckles are whitening. He's, you know, salivating and drooling all over the place. He's kind of snarling and growling, and 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 has an aura of menace around him. Right? I didn't even really talk about what the orc looks like at all. But from that from that description, you can convey that he probably doesn't have good intent towards your character. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and you you know you could let the player fill in some details too if you wanted to. Hey, you know what? You know why? You know you're encountering this orc in an alley in town. Uh, you know wh what's around you, right? Because players will ask this all the time. You know, is this around me? Is that around me? Uh, you can say you're in an alley. What do you think's around you? And you could let them say, "Oh, well, I think there's a, a a heap of trash over in the corner, and there's some barrels for collecting rainwater. You know, over on this side, and there's a lonely crate. Perfect. That's exactly what's there." And you know, and now he can you know use that crate to climb up onto. He can kick over a barrel of rainwater. What you know, whatever he wants to do. So by having the players fill in the details that are important and potentially useful to them, it number one, it's giving them player agency, which is incredibly useful uh, for the game itself, 
but it, it's going to do another side effect, and that's to, gonna, going to draw them in to the story that little bit of extra because they're adding a bit to the world. And it might be something as simple as a crate or a barrel of water, but those things give them more options as a player and as a, or it gives them more options as a character, but as a player, they feel more ingrained in the story, more drawn in because they've had a say, a bigger say than they might normally have been able to do because they're just a player. They're not the GM. Well, and also too, like they might start filling in their own black blanks about the details as well. Like they're the ones that said there was a pile of garbage, right? So it does the part, maybe in their mind now it stinks, right? It smells bad because there's garbage there. So, so there's there's all of these different things going on, or you know, say you have that same that same scenario where it's in a city again, and your player your players are getting there, and you say, hey, you know, have you been here before? And they're like, yes, yes, I have. You know, I've been here many years ago. Well, Geron, the, the uh, half-elven shield mating, uh, you guys are looking for a tavern. Uh, what was the, your favorite tavern when you when you uh, came here in the past? Oh, well, it was the Gilded Lily. I always go to the Gilded Lily, Lily because, you know, they serve their, their, their uh, honeysuckle duck like nobody else, right? So... You can let them add details to your world and fill in the blanks for you and make the game more interesting. And they start to get like vested in it. And then you as the DM, it fr frees up some of your brain, your, your brain space to do other things. And you, by having them create locations, that saves you the work. You can write all that stuff down and you can be able to use it. But that also then they become vested and interested in that location. Now you have potential adventure hooks because if something happens to the Gilded Lily, that that character cares about it or those characters will care about it and they will seek to, to rectify that problem. They'll rectify that situation because they care about that place. Now, the key to making this work is to not force or thrust it upon your players, but have them accept it, right? So I try and tell my players, hey, this is the thing I like to do. Uh, you can always throw it back to me. If you throw it back <laughs> to me, that's fine. Or, or, you know, or if they want to partially, if they partially want to do it, they can do that as well. I've had a player go, I don't know, random adjective with animal because <laughs> I asked them for a tavern. I'm like, oh, excellent, the blue hyena. And it's the blue hyena because there's this big stuffed hyena that is in that is in the common room and it's been dyed blue. It's been like that forever. No one even knows why anymore. So, you know, so it's kind of like you just do like some improv. And if they want to give you a little, take it. If they want to give you a lot, you can take that as well. As long, you know, as long as they're being reasonable and what they're offering up is consistent with the world and the game you're playing, there's there's nothing wrong with that. So, details are, are incredibly important. And in my last session that I ran, Griffin Gaff was under siege and I, I gave players, you know, for, for part of it, a, a roll off. One person was going to give me a good thing that happened. One person was going to give me something bad that happened. So the first two days of the siege, it was okay. What happened? And they were thrown for a loop because it's like, what do you mean? I have to say something that, you know. The person who, who was saying something good, yeah, no problems. Oh, the plans that we had set in motion, they worked perfectly. Great. When it went to the person that was like, oh, I got to do something bad, he, he's trying to sit there and think like, okay, I got a really great idea, but that's really bad. So he's trying to, you know, balance the scales of, okay, well, I want to do something that's, that's that fulfills the criteria, but isn't too bad for the town. It's like, like I thought he was going to be like, oh, the walls crack, and you know they're breaking through, and like they wanted the siege. That's really bad. So it was a lot, lot of fun, and the players really got into having that kind of details to be able to share. And and again, too, it's like you know figuring out like the happy balance of you know letting your players insert the, these details into your game, and you taking and working with them, and at the same time like respecting the dynamic at the table so that you're not, maybe you have a, a player that's, you know, maybe they're not as creative or they're more shy or whatever. So you, you want to try not to like bulldoze them over and send them into a panic attack, you know, you, you know, when you're supposed to be having a playing a game and having fun. How do you handle details in, in your game at your table? You know, is it all on you or do you, do you share the burden? Let us know in the comments below while you're down there. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.
can tweet at us over at Twitter. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.